Good afternoon and welcome to the Brooklyn Museum. I'm Cora Michael, Associate Curator of Exhibitions, and it's a pleasure to welcome you to our final program in our four-part conversation series, pairing artists from the exhibition This Place with notable writers. We are thrilled to have photographer Wendy Ewald and author Luke Sant with us today to speak about Ewald's experiences in Israel and Palestine, as well as their shared interests in vernacular photography and the social and cultural significance of everyday images. For the past four decades, artist Wendy Ewald has been working with children and adults around the world using her unique form of collaborative picture making. Rather than photographing her subjects, Ewald hands out cameras to the people she works with and allows them to photograph themselves, their families, and their communities. At other times, she invites the people she photographs to mark or write on the negatives she has made, thus complicating the notion of authorship. A key part of her mission as an artist is educational, and in 1989, she helped create Literacy Through Photography, a program at Duke University's Center for Documentary Studies. For this place, an exhibition exploring Israel and the West Bank through the eyes of 12 international photographers, Ewald worked with 14 different communities in the region, including Druze middle school students, stall owners in Jerus Jerusalem's Mahani Yehuda Market, Bedouin sixth grade students, Palestinian women elders, and workers in Tel Aviv's high-tech industry. The extraordinary results can be seen in our galleries until June 5th, as well as in her beautiful, bit, her beautiful book titled This Is Where I Live. Over the years, Ewald has won numerous awards and fellowships, including a National Endowment for the Arts Fellowship, a MacArthur Fellowship, a Guggenheim Fellowship, and the Anonymous Was a Woman Award. She is a visiting artist in residence at Amherst College. Writer Luc Sant has chronicled the seedy underbellies and rich countercultures of cities like New York and Paris in such works as Low Life, Lures and Snares of Old New York from 1991, and The Other Paris, published in 2015 by Farrar, Strauss, and Giroux. These books, along with his entertaining and elegiac 2003 essay, My Lost City, serve to remind us of the fact that all the cities in the world were at one time unstable, freaky, and colossally sordid, as Sant said in an interview in the Paris Review. Sant also has a special fascination for such low art forms as postcards, family snapshots, and crime scene photographs, as he explored in his books Evidence and Folk Photography, the American Real Photo Postcard, 1905 to 1930. He has also written numerous articles on art, music, film, and photography for the New York Review of Books, the New York Times Magazine, Cabinet, Art Forum, and many other publications. His book of um, uh, a collected, um, excuse me, a collection of his essays, um, which he wrote between 1990 and 2005, is Kill All Your Darlings, published in 2007. He is the recipient of a Whiting Writers Award, an award in literature from the American Academy of Arts and Letters, a Grammy for album notes he wrote for the 1997 reissue of the Anthology of American Folk Music, an Infinity Award for writing from the International Center of Photography, and Guggenheim and Coleman Fellowships. Sant is visiting professor of writing and photography at Bard College, where he has taught since 1999, and he is currently at work on a biography of Lou Reed. Please join me in welcoming Wendy Ewald and Luke Sant. <clears throat> Hi, thank you all for coming. Um, so, Wendy, this amazing project of yours. Um, Ooh. Uh -oh. Anyway, this, I think I'm supposed to put, oh, no, wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> All right. There we go. Um, well, let's start from scratch. Um, so, um, you. So, this is, a, this is a group of kids um, in Nazareth, and uh, each of the projects that I did. W well, I worked in different communities, but there were different populations of, of um, people in every place. And this was a sixth grade group. Um, and this is a picture of us on a, on a community walk. And it's the outskirts of, of Nazareth. And one of the things at a certain point that I do is walk with my students to see, to see how they're seeing, to see how, what they're photographing, how they're photographing. How did this particular project begin? Well, 
it, it, it began with a, a commission um, that uh, to be able to photograph her work for two years, over a period of two years in Israel and Palestine. Um, and I was very dubious about it in the beginning because I really didn't feel like I had anything particularly to add to, to, to the conversation. There were a lot of interesting um, Israeli and Palestinian photographers and, um, you know, I, and also it was such a, a, a polarized situation. I really, did, it, that doesn't really interest me that much. I'm much more interested in what's sort of in between things. Mm -hmm. And um, so I went uh, and, and tried to see if I thought I had something to say there. And at first uh, it, it was very uncomfortable, but then eventually um, I, picked one place to go and to see how it would work, and, and that was Nazareth in the Arab, two Arab Israeli communities. And that was a place that I really felt was, you know, it was of both worlds, but something unto its own. And, um, and then um, people started asking me um, to uh, do projects. Um, so this is, this is a classroom in a village school, an Arab-Israeli village school, and um, a uh, translator, um, the translator that the kids worked with, um, so she would translate from the Arabic to English for me. Um, and, uh, and then eventually, um, like for example, this project was with stall owners um, in, in Jerusalem in the Mahana Yuda market who were very that, um, orthodox, I guess, that's what the, their reputation mm -hmm. was. Um, and um, we would meet once a week and they would bring food from their stalls and it was kind of like a, like a party class and um, uh, they were very serious about their work and they called me the professor. And um, here they're learning about perspective and try, you know, testing out different perspectives. <laughs> So, um, it, had they ever photographed before? Were these people new to photography? Or? Well, there were some who hadn't and some mm -hmm. who had. Um, the, the, by and large, the, the Jewish people had, had, had photographed more, I'd say, than the, mm -hmm. the Arabs or the, or the Palestinians. Um, that's a gross generalization, but, um, but in a way it was a, they were doing it in a, in a much more conscious way, I guess, mm -hmm. than, than they ever had. Um, and then over a period of two years, you ultimately had 14 groups going. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is, this is a, a group of army uh, boys in a military academy. This is Dolev, who's, who's learning how, to, um, how a, a large format camera works. And, and I, I also photograph them with the large format camera. So he's shooting him himself in, in, in this picture. But yeah, there was, uh, I had a friend who's a um, head of social work in, in East Jerusalem. And so she suggested that I work with elderly Palestinian women and gypsies and um, a filmmaker was working with the, with the market people. So he wanted me to work with them as well. So it, it, uh, I wasn't planning on doing a sort of global look <laughs> And, uh, but then I felt like, you know, this was what was presenting itself and I, I should follow. Yeah, it's remarkable. I mean, um, how it seems, I mean, as somebody who really doesn't know much about Israel, I confess, uh, it does seem like you've got so many of the possible situations, ethnically, et, et cetera. That, um, yeah, that how, what was, was, were you or your, uh, assistant searching precisely to fill in all the corners, or it just happened? Well, at a certain point, I mean, in, in the beginning, I just thought, well, that I wanted to work in the army because it was so different than, you know, working with the, with the Arab, Israeli, or Palestinian kids. And mm -hmm. um, uh, so that was obvious. And, and, but then as, you know, I followed people's suggestions, then it, I became conscious, like, and, and there are, Six, uh, six Jewish projects and, and, and mm -hmm. six um, Arabic or Palestinian projects. Um, 
<clears throat> and then also I was being asked to work with people who weren't children, which is, I've worked with children a lot. Mm -hmm. So then that became more interesting to, to figure out different, um, you know, that it was important to have different ages and people in different stages of their lives and mm -hmm. what the photographs meant to them at that point um, was interesting. Yeah. Uh, how much time did you spend teaching them photography before setting before them they, loose? Well, um, generally, um, we, we spent we, I, maybe a, a couple of weeks or something mm -hmm. like that talking about what photographs uh, they'd taken, what was their experience with photographs, what they wanted to do, why did they want to do this, um, looking through a camera, what is framing, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, what you would sort of do with anybody. Sure. Um, and, uh, and, then, and then would ask them to go out and, and shoot. Um, and see what was happening and mm -hmm. kind of go from there what what they were doing But I never worked with digital before so it was kind uh -huh. of a new experience So that must have meant a lot more <laughs> yeah. Exposures than you're normally used yeah. to. Yeah, yeah, it, it was yeah an uh -huh. insane number of, of photographs, but um, You know something like you know a hundred thousand or something like that <laughs> um, because there were so you know so many places, and then each person took a lot of photographs. It's not like they mm -hmm. you know did it for you know a month or something. A lot of them, some of them did it for for up to two years. Um, and the, probably the shortest group, the last one I did, maybe did it for four months. But mm. um, so they were shooting, they were shooting a lot, and uh, it was interesting. Yeah, because there, I, every single one of these groups produced remarkable pictures. There are more, there are snapshotty kind of pictures, mm -hmm. but there's at least like one like incredible kind of museum quality picture in every single one of these 14 groups. And that just seems miraculous. I mean, do, do you think that, um, do you think that ultimately everybody is capable of being a wonderful photographer? Do you think it's a matter of chance? Do you think some, pe some people d are better than others in these groups, or you know? Yeah, I think all <laughs> yes yeah. to all of those <laughs> yeah. things. Right. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I spend a lot of time, or not a lot of time, but you know, I really think about how what equipment to use mm -hmm. and how to teach them how to use it, and what's the best way for them to use it so they get the best, you know, results in a way, mm -hmm. and um, tell them things like, you know, you're not allowed to low zoom was something I said all the time. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, um, you know, so, so that you have the possibility of like blowing them up or doing different things. Um, but, but they were teaching me about, uh, you know, how the camera worked and, and mm. what are the, were the limits uh -huh. of it and, um, and, and also how things look so different in, in a digital, you know, mm -hmm. situation. I was afraid it was going to be very um, kind of cold. Uh. Um, and like, you know, without sort of imperfection and that mm. I had grown to love a lot with, you know, black and white and sure. developing and all that. But that wasn't the case. It was just, it was a different language. Mm -hmm. um, and they knew, you know, they really learned how to, how to use it and play with it a lot. So, um, mm -hmm. anyway, so, yeah. so yeah, so here are the elderly women. And um, so what we would do is when they would, bring back, I would, when I was there, I wasn't there all the time, but I would be there for, you know, three or four weeks, and we would meet all the time, and then I would go away, come back, and they would have shot more pictures, and uh, they would bring their, their cameras, and we would download, um, and, and then look at everything together, um, and, you know, do a little critique mm -hmm. sec session, um, and, you can see how serious they are, you know, I mean, they're really looking at them and they, and they were, worked very hard and uh, they're still photographing now. And in, in a way, for me, this was like the most successful project yeah. because it was something very different than I had done before, but, but also it meant a lot to them, I think, um, because they're in a situation where there is um, a lot going on, and um, it's a, one of the most contested places um, right now. 
and um, they didn't know what they would be able to photograph when they started. But um, they learned that, or some of them particularly, that, that they could photograph what was going on. Um, and, and also there were other women who were much more involved in, in domestic, uh, photographing domestic things or traveling, but they had the time to work on it that you know, some other mm -hmm. people wouldn't, wouldn't have had. Are they the only group where the traveled outside their immediate area? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. For the most part, you know, they 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 also belong to a women's group, and uh -huh. you know, so sometimes they would go together. Um, and so these are the fourteen. I, oh no, maybe we could turn the lights down a little bit. Um, the fourteen uh, groups, and you can't. It's hard to see the the map of Israel <laughs> to the right. <laughs> But um, but that that's where they where they all are, and this is this is from the the book. Um, but maybe we could turn the lights down a little bit more, anyway. <laughs> um, so it, I don't know if you can read these titles, but they're titles that the that they um, put on the photographs uh, later um, after I had done the first edit. Then I would bring them back with sort of uh, in contact sheet form, and then they would write the, the titles um, that they wanted um, on the photograph with the idea that, um, something we talked about, that, that if you want to direct people to what it is you wanted to photograph, you know, the, the, the text is a way mm -hmm. to do that. Um, so this is pre prepared to receive their released relatives outside Ofra prison. So this was one of the big, um, you know, prison releases while I was there. It's interesting, I saw this picture, when I first saw this picture, I thought, they've looked at Gilles Perez. Uh, <laughs> That's right. You know, yeah. That's right, especially when you go and see his mm -hmm. in insulation, yeah. This, like, diffused focus and, yeah. 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 I noticed a lot of re-photographing of photographs. Mm -hmm. Is that the thing you encouraged, or did they come up with that on their own? Yeah, they came up with that on their own. I think uh -huh. it's a, it's a way of extending what they can photograph. It, it it's a way they can photograph history. Mm -hmm. um, right. And uh, yeah. and it's and it's powerful the way that they've learned how to how to photograph it. So it's sure. not doesn't look uh, cheesy. <laughs> and um, studio photography in the Middle East is a thing of wonder anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, in so many different forms. Is it, is that still is it? I mean. Is it still, uh, this is just, you know, kind of semi-relevant question, but I'm curious because studio photography has so, come so close to disappearing in the West. Is it still vigorous over there? Yes, in comparison to other places I've been, mm -hmm. or maybe like Africa as, uh -huh. as well. But, yeah. um, but also the thing is that uh, you can get things made out of photographs uh -huh. and, and um, I mean, I, I became close friends with the with the studio photographer in in Nazareth, and uh, used his his studio, mm -hmm. um, and you know, which was great because he had the backdrops, yeah. tulips of Holland, he had an English cottage, and, oh, man. you know, yeah. uh, and uh, you know, everybody loved it. Um, and then, of course, you go to the other extreme, and you go to places where they'll actually do your um, you know, suicide portrait. Oh, right, of course. Yeah, yeah. and so there, yeah, you can order what you want. Yeah. Anyway, um, this to me was, was an amazing uh, group of pictures of this swimming pool, which is something, you know, I would have never, A, thought existed, and B, would never have been able to, mm. to photograph. Um, and, you know, in a lot of these photographs, the colors are just, astonishing to yes, me too. Yeah. So uh, one of the <clears throat> women that I worked with was Nadia and Nadia particularly um, asked me the first day, she said, "What? I, I don't know what I can photograph. I want to photograph the demonstrations because where she lived is Sheikh Jarrah in, in East Jerusalem which is um, uh, was a particular, I'm sure it still is, hot spot. And settlers had um, taken over her, a house that she had built for her son, 
behind her. Um, and um, so she was living, you know, right, right next to these, you know, that's the house, and they had a, you know, a dog. Mm -hmm. And it, there was constant harassment. Um, so she, at first she didn't understand that she could photograph it, and I didn't want to push her. I said, well, you know, you could do something metaphorical, you know, to, you know don't worry, I don't want mm -hmm. you to put yourself in harm's way. And, but she started really photographing what was happening at that next house, and which seemed, and people told me, it gave her a lot of strength. Um, so this is, this is the, um, you know, the surveillance monitor inside of her house. And you can see where one of the cameras has, has been busted um, on, on the top mm -hmm. by the settler neighbors. And um, by the time I'd left, there was two more <laughs> busted. Oh my God, right. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the, these, these elders produce some of ner the, the nerviest pictures. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, they could get, and they could also get that, that close, and, and, you know, someone's not going to be afraid of them. That's right, yeah. They have the In the same um, way. Protection um, of age. Yeah, 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 which even I find, which is great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so these guys just hung out there, really, basically during the day. And then on the, on the next to where, sh you know, which was like, over to that wall, I guess, mm. to, to where Nadia was. And then people who were observers, um, you know, peace observers, would sit in front of her house. <laughs> so it was a pretty <laughs> wild situation. Yeah. And there, she's actually photographed the guy. Mm. Um, this is one instance where she did use the Zoom. <laughs> mm. um, so, you know, it was very, rewarding project, I think, for, for uh, all of us. And the, and the women actually wanted to um, start teaching other women. Uh -huh. um, so it, I think it's something that actually could be very useful. And that's, that's something worth pointing out, you know, that you haven't mentioned, I think, is that your projects just keep going. I mean, they don't stop once yeah. you've left. So potentially there's years, even generations to come. Yeah, it was interesting. I went back um, to Tel Aviv. Uh, well, this show opened. This show opened in, in Tel Aviv, and so I, I visited, or or people came to the show. All the people that I worked with, um, and the, the women didn't feel right about going to the museum in in, in mm -hmm. Tel Aviv. So I went um, to see them and and took them the book, um, which I encourage you guys to look at because there's a lot more stuff in the book, and. Now, you know, I'm always nervous, you know, when that happens, because here they are, all these different people in the same book. Mm. And I mean, they know it, we've talked about it, everything, but it's different to see it. And um, so I was particularly worried about what they were going to say. Um, but um, I think a couple of them said, you know, this is really important. Now, now we will be remembered. Mm -hmm. You know, now we, you know, our lives have been recorded and it was yeah. quite meaningful. I mean, it, it was quite, I mean, it's quite moving for me to, to hear that. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like inviting, almost like inviting all of them to a dinner party, you know. Yeah. And being in all, all under the same covers, you know. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. right, which is a radical thing, I guess. Yeah. Um, I mean, people have told me that. Mm -hmm. but. Now we're going into another no, another sure. group. Yeah. So this is one of the, one of the things that that I've done to help people try to think about how to photograph their community, which of course is an abstract notion and pretty hard to um, you know to come up with ideas at first if you're not used to it. And so I just ask them things they like and they don't like, and we write them down and, and, uh, and then take um, something that they pick out that they don't like. In this case, it was shooting and killing. And, uh, and so then they listed all the things, I images that they could see in their mind um, that had to do with shooting. Mm -hmm. 
And in, in this case, I didn't realize that their, their lives were as sort of you know, fraught with danger as, as they were until we started doing this. Mm -hmm. um, because it seemed like such an open and warm place in a lot of ways. Um, and then they would take something like, you know, police, and then what photographs would you make? Um, and then, as I said, I would, I would take things back um, home um, after a trip, and, and then I would do a gross edit, and then um, make these contact sheets for all the kids and, and bring them back, and then ask them to write, um, to write on them, you know, any titles that they that they wanted. Mm. Um, so it was a series of, um, you know, edits over edits, and you know, and I would bring them back, or if they didn't want to use something, then they would exit out. So you yourself went through all these hundreds yeah. of thousands. Of yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That was. It was like a dream. It mm. was really. I loved it, Be because it wasn't only. It was getting into the culture's head in a way, but it was also getting into every single person's head. Um, right. You know, the way that they were seeing, and it was really exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I'd have to do it, you know, a few times before I sort of got, got a rhythm of what they were, they were looking at and how they were composing. I thought it was interesting when in the book you mentioned that when you were working, when you first started working with the kids in Nazareth, you showed them um, Helen Levitt photographs oh, yeah. and they had them pick out everything that was going on. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, it yeah. seems to filter through. And, and yeah, like, so they became pretty conscious that, you know, they were all, you know, that you had to do a good read of what was, mm -hmm. um, what was in a photograph and then, and then you could sort of be conscious about um, making a photograph in, in a way, and and also how complex they are, and Helen Levitt's so great because there's so many um, uh, layers, I guess. Right. Yeah. To one of her photographs, especially you know the ones on the street, which are most of them. But did you show the other groups like famous photographs? And the same and... thing. I showed everybody the same thing. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So that Helen Levitt is just perfect example of. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't matter that it's a, that it's a kids, that it's right. kids, because yeah. everybody's been a kid and everybody remembers their <laughs> childhood. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was actually I did a project last fall in in a in a prison in Massachusetts, and they used um, some Helen Levitt photographs, and it was powerful. Oh, I bet. Um, you know, just the memories they had of like being in the street and and how they could totally relate to them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, um, so this is uh, one of the students. Um, we in on that walk. We went in the community in in Nazareth. One of the places they they wanted to photograph was um, in this um, monument that had been. It was a it was a monument to martyrs who um, died during uh, right before the Second Intifada. Um, in in Arab Israeli communities, I mean some in Nazareth, but um, and um, so this is the first place that the kids actually wanted to go to photograph, mm. but it was closed, so <laughs> they were uh. doing it through the through through the gate. And there, um, yeah. So this is one of the photographs um, taken by one of one of the kids of the city. Um, and what's remarkable about, about these digital cameras, probably a lot of this you know, but you can blow these things up, you know, like this big, mm -hmm. and they look like they were shot with a four by five. Yeah. You know, if you know, <laughs> you know, if you're yeah. careful. Um, Crazy. And this is, I want to take a picture of a helicopter. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, and this is. Isra's family. And my grandfather Mohammed and his Quran books. Mm. So one thing is that the the Arab Israeli kids they made a lot of still lives in, in mm. their homes. Um, and I've never really seen that, but 
they're I think they're beautiful, amazingly composed, and I the know, things that they're photographing yeah. are really interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's um, I forget what they call that process, but I guess it, it hung on in the Middle East a lot longer than it did in the West. It, you know, it's, um, yeah. Trying to turn a photograph into a drawing. It's carbon yeah. of something. I don't like know that. what it's called. I forget, either. But yeah. Yeah. It's very fragile actually. Yeah. Yeah, cause, yeah, because you can see where it's peeling off, but but beautiful. And he's got a kind of you know, uh, importance, mm -hmm. you know, with, with the image, but then with the books underneath and it, yeah. it all, you know, works together and Right. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, the composition is fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I mean, this mm -hmm. is crazy, <laughs> <laughs> but really great. And there were, to answer your questions, there were some really good photographers, mm -hmm. like Ma Malik was one of them. Uh huh, yeah. Um, and I think in each group, you know, they were like gifts. Right, um, sure. And, uh, I can see that. But then the, the, everybody made interesting pictures. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, some of them were just. And I guess when I started the project, when I started seeing the pictures, uh, the first time I started seeing the pictures, I realized I could do the, do the work because there was something there in the pictures that I, was, I hadn't understood before, I hadn't seen before, and you know, yeah. so that was it. I thought, okay, this, yeah, this is gonna yeah. work somehow or another. Uh -huh. um, yeah, more pictures of pictures. And so that's Aya, that's going to the party by Aya, and so that's Aya. So, you know, it's another way of them photographing themselves, uh -huh. you know, at different times. I actually wasn't life. sure if that was a commercial photograph. Is it kind yeah. Of that look? yeah. Well, it may be, you know, it may have been. I mean, uh -huh. they may have taken her to oh, I see. Yeah, the studio yeah. and... Yeah. Um, yeah. That's remarkable. Yeah, and then and it's really sharp all the way into the into the rose. And the, the black background is, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Yeah, so the t you know, the, the downloading of the pictures was just like <laughs> it was such a wonderful experience, you mm -hmm. know, you just didn't it's so exciting, you didn't know what was gonna be there next. This is one of my favorite ones. Yeah. Um, and uh, n again, another one by Malik. And, um, you know, it's his little brother um, sitting on the fish tank. Oh. I didn't see that. <laughs> I didn't really. <laughs> yeah. That. So all these pictures have these little things in them, you know, that. Uh, yeah. You, and it, is it a corner of the room or is it set up like this, you know? Because it does look like. Um, a certain kind of studio setup, right, mm -hmm. with the flowers. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And that's what their houses are like. They uh -huh. are like studio setups, uh -huh. you know. I mean, that's. <laughs> and, um, but I love the idea that this one is called the traditional costume, mm. because for so, you know, for a lot of people who look at that, you know, their association is like with Yasser Arafat right. or the PLO or whatever. But you know, this is what his father and grandfather wore and. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the way he wanted his little brother to That's look. That's right. Okay, so. Wow. A social media agency in, in Tel Aviv. Yeah, so this is somebody's desk, Anat's desk. Um, and they were the first social, um, Blink was the first social media agency in, in Israel. And, um, you know, so this was a conscious idea on my part of wanting to see another part of of Israel because this these offices and these companies that are all right together it's called um, Silicon Wadi, so <laughs> Silicon Valley mm. and uh, Israeli uh, um, in Hebrew, and um, so they agreed to all the the designers and the um, um, These do seem like the most self-consciously arty of the pictures. Oh yeah, the yeah. Groups. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. And there's many, you know, many more of them that are very self-conscious. <laughs> right. So the screen eyes are watching. That's a pretty self-conscious yeah. title. <laughs> They're also, they, they also do still lives, though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is, yeah, yeah this is the uh, Cisco's office, and the title's My Favorite Client, and it, it's by Hagar, who... She, um, she designed their social media campaign for Israel. Um, and um, she was probably the best photographer in, in that group. She just, when she started, she just photographed mm -hmm. everything. So here, here's the, uh, their uh, board meeting. Um, and this is called Empty Chairs at a Cisco conference. Do you think there's any significance to the chairs being empty? Uh, probably. I don't know, but I didn't yeah. ask her. You know, one, one thing <laughs> about these, these things is that there's so much happening and yeah, things yeah. happen so fast. There's a lot of things I'd like to know that I, mm -hmm. you know, don't. Oh, yeah. And then this is her too. And there she is, our orthodox neighbor through the hole in the door. Um, you know, so, so she's, you know, she's just looking, and her house is made uh, as, a, as a set. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's this incredible wow. um, uh, wallpaper, and, and she goes and finds things on the street and constructs these uh -huh. um, installations. And so I find that a lot of times that the people who are really good photographers, you know, are, are arranging, you know, their, their lives in really interesting ways ways, mm -hmm. uh, you know, their houses, their, what they wear, what, you know, um, even right. little kids. Yeah. That's so her husband's cousin. Wonderful light. Yeah. Yeah. It, it reminds me of a uh, Philip de Courchet picture. I was thinking Nan Golden. Or Nan Golden. Yeah. yeah. The, yes. Yeah. 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 So, oh, this is the army. The, um, it's, I started working with these boys in a military academy. Um, in, it's in the Dead Sea area, in a kibbutz. Um, and some of them stayed with me, uh, or we kept working, um, following their graduation from the military academy. And, and then when they went into army training and then in the, in the army. Um, and um, it's a school for military academy for at-risk boys. And some, I mean, the military really sees, it as, sees itself as a place that um, uh, homogenizes the country. So in, in, this, in this case, there were kids from Ethiopia, from um, you know Russia, immigrants, mm. and they were kids who were who were having a hard time, mm. you know, socially, and so, and really, a military academy in in Israel is is started with um, with Orthodox um, Jews who wanted to prepare their kids for um, for the army so that they could keep their faith during that time when they were mixed up mm. with, with everybody. This is way earlier. And um, so, so they're really supposed to be the elite, you know, by going through these, through these academies. Um, and um, so these guys um, were with me for, we were with each other for, for like six months when they were in the academy. Then um, I, I tried to get permission for them to keep shooting in the army, um, but uh, I couldn't get it. Uh. And so, uh, but I, we just said, okay, if you want to keep shooting, keep shooting. Mm -hmm. And so that's what, that's what some of them did. And then so I was able to, um, you know, we could see their photographs for over like two and a half years or something like that. You have, um, you have, in the book, you have another military academy group, which is the women. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I got the impression that they were generally from more prosperous backgrounds than the guys were? Or? Yeah, I think that that's true. But, and they were um, from Orthodox families. Mm -hmm. So most of them had, were going against their, you know, their family culture to even join the army. Huh. And so these, these girls uh, decided, found the place and decided to go on their, on their own. Um, so it's quite a really interesting group of people, and um, also they were very, you know, feminist. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So, it, um, so this is this is once um, once Aviad was in the army. Um, this is called Observation Stand, and then this is. Uh, this is their field training, which is right in, in the beginning. And this is the most secret, I guess. I mean, they're really not supposed to photograph this, uh, but um, there haven't been any repercussions. And they're out of the army now, so uh -huh. <laughs> I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Good. Didn't give away any state secrets. So. Yeah. Um, so training in the desert. And I don't know, this one is very poignant to me that, that you know, this guy is out there all by himself in the, in the desert and you know this kid is looking at him and you know you know he's what is he doing there and i'm sure he probably feels that and, uh, yeah and in wearing um very very hot clothing in this mm -hmm. incredibly hot place yeah. and also I, I was wondering if there was something about you know the the air because it happened to me at least three times i looked at this picture and i, I first had the impression of the camel being a miniature. Yes. It doesn't look like it's far away. It yeah. looks like it's just very small. Yeah. 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 Maybe I mean, it's the tractor it does this. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, so let's see. I think, oh, yeah. And this is by Mul Khan, who was one of the Ethiopian kids who also really liked to photograph. Um, and, and, you know, I don't. I think what they're doing here is is you know learning how to do things, um, you know while they're blindfolded. I see, right? Um, like field strip of yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Because you can see the other kids doing it in the mm -hmm. back too. Um, but these kids also were uh, really conscious of the fact that they were being stigmatized um, outside of Israel. I see. And they were really interested in, um, in saying this as an opportunity to talk about who they were and what they thought. And, mm -hmm. um, and so we had some pretty interesting conversations. Uh, and there were some things that happened while I was there. There was a, massac a massacre of a, of a settler family and they had, um, you know, um, sat with the, with the family, and the media really focused on them. So there were all these opportunities to talk about, you know, what the media means, what what photographs mean, mm, and you know, mm -hmm. if they were to take their photographs, what do they want uh, them to say? Other, yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. so. And this is a reconciliation ceremony between Dolev, who you saw earlier with the mm -hmm. four by five and, and a deer. Um, and I, for a long time, just thought it was a, you know, a meaningful meeting. And mm -hmm. I didn't realize that there was actually something institutionalized um, oh. to, um, you know, to deal with any conflicts. Um, As a, huh. Oh, so it's, yeah, I wondered about the word ceremony. It seemed a little, but I see. Yeah, it really I think it was a really a ceremony. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the <laughs> first person camera. There. Yeah, yeah, but very. Uh, yeah, this is what happens a lot. <laughs> yeah, a lot of when they're when they're around, um, and they were living in the in in this uh, really beautiful kibbutz on, on, the, on the Dead Sea, and there was a hotel there and a swimming pool mm. and that they could use. So for a lot of them, it was kind of really 
a very idealistic place that they had, and, and they had come from different, you know, circumstances right, to this place. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is the last one um, of the slides, Praying in the Dark by Aviad. Um, and it's amazing what these cameras can do. I mean, yeah, you don't need sure much is. light, you know, to, to draw something um, yeah. out, of a, out of a situation that's pretty complicated. Wow. So, th so that's four, you know, four of the, of the groups. Mm -hmm. But there are also the gypsies, the right. um, the, the Bedouin, the right. Druze, yeah, yeah. Um, the kibbutz. Um, I always would forget <laughs> forget all the fourteen. Yeah, I'm right here, the elders kibbutz. Um, you have a oh yeah, that's right. You have um, a mixed school in Lod. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was. I didn't know that such a thing existed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's quite a few, but Lod, um, Lod is a mixed city. Um, I mean, it was an, an Arabic city and um, was, um, uh, I can't remember, maybe it was 67. Um, a, a lot of um, the Arabs were moved out and, and there was, uh, people were settled there from from Russia, India, um, mm -hmm. Jews were settled there. And, um, and so it was a predominantly Jewish, well, the kids, the classroom I worked with was pr predominantly Jewish, but, um, but there were Arab kids and uh, they were wonderful to work with. They were very excited about it. And, uh, and they took a lot of pictures. But when I came to interview them, because I interviewed people in all the different um, communities to sort of have a, um, for the book, to have a um, context, you know, because I wanted to kind of make it like a, like an atlas in a, in, in a way. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so I, I, I guess consciously I, I interviewed different groups of kids, different, you know, I, I had Jew, a gr Jewish group, an Arabic group, et cetera. Um, and, and um, you know, whereas the Arabic kids talked about how they thought it was really great to be in this mixed school and um, were very positive. Um, the Jewish, um, many of the Jewish kids said, you know, they didn't really, you know, they thought it was great to be in a, good, in a mixed school and they liked their classmates, um, but, they didn't like the Arabs, and the Arabs were were breaking things and um, uh, making things dangerous. And when it is a dangerous area, um, yeah. and uh, as long as there were no who had Arabs in their building and who didn't have Arabs, and um, so it was much more uh, less idealistic than I uh -huh. yeah. thought. I was very moved by the gypsies. I mean, the, the most excluded group in the world. And, mm -hmm. and even though there was a significant gypsy population in Israel. Yeah. Um, they know. say they come with, they came with um, Salah, Salah Hadin, or Salah, my son uh -huh. always called it Salah Houdin when he was little, <laughs> Saladin or Saladin, Saladin yeah. um, from Saudi Arabia. But that's, mm. that's not the, you no. know, everybody's supposed to have come from India. So right. I don't know. But it's interesting also talking to people because I realize that so much of, of what it really, all their lives, all the community's lives were about were moving. You know, whether it was over 500 years or, you know, oh, 40 yeah. years or, um, <coughs> but everybody has an exodus story. Wow. Basically. Also, there was the Christians. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and then that, that Haifa, you know, was it was an, mm -hmm. an Arab city, and um, um, there were Christians living there then, and as as well as Muslims, and then um, when uh, when. Most of the Arabs moved out, and, and during during 48, the school where the 
where I worked with the kids, which was a French school started um, in 1850 or something mm. like that by nuns from France. And um, it's a beautiful school. And these kids and were more economically stable than, than a lot of the other kids I mm. worked with. Um, and the, the nuns um, during 48 uh, hid, um, you know, Palestinians. Um, so now it, it's much more of a, of a mix of all different populations in the school. But oh, I see. Um, wow. So, um, um, do you have another project that you're thinking about <laughs> these days? Well, I'd love to, th this idea of, of, you know, working over this broader space with one, you know, yeah. this either situation, country, idea, whatever. Um, I would really like to do it with, um, with indigenous people, or the idea of what does, in, I think we were talking about this, what does mm. in indigenous mean yeah. um, over the world or within a smaller situation, or what does it mean, you know, if you're indigenous in prison, or if you're, you know, a businessman, or, you know, th there's all these different, um, and I guess the reason why maybe I'm interested in it is, is that the first project I did was with indigenous people in Canada in 1969. Um, and, you know, it's something that I've been thinking about. Um, That's the first time you had handed out cameras to yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I had just graduated from, from high school and uh, uh -huh. I went up there for a summer to work with kids, so, and I just learned how to use my four by five, sort of, and uh, so I thought it would be interesting to do because in those days, Polaroid, the Polaroid Foundation gave cameras and films to mm. people who were working in education, as Susan Mizellis knows. Um, and she did a beautiful book of all the projects um, that, or a lot of projects that teachers had done in, in, in the 60s. Wow, yeah. So, wow. one of those 60s things that comes back around. It sure does, and, and with digital cameras, I mean, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the possibilities just expand so much, right? You know? Yeah, 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 and it's not so expensive and mm -hmm. um, in, in some ways. And it, you, I mean, I could work so fast, and I could never have done that project with, with film. Oh, yeah, and the, the expense is so much reduced. And, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, and then the, and just like Polaroid, you could see it right away, and mm -hmm. you know you can edit and all these. And some of the um, some of the kids you've ha have become from your past projects have become professional photographers, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, not a lot, but a but lot. yeah, and and mm -hmm. I also I'm working on a on a uh, <clears throat> a film of um, the with the the students I worked with in in Appalachia in the. Um, uh, early to mid 70s or, or mid 70s, and seeing um, who they are now and what that experience meant to them, and are they shooting, and you know what they're shooting, and how they see see that as part of their lives. Mm -hmm. So that's been really, really interesting, um, and you know, kind of touching in ways that I wouldn't have yeah. understood. Mm -hmm. Well, we're almost at the end of our time here. Anything else that I haven't asked? I'm sure there's a million things I haven't <laughs> asked. No, oh, I don't know. Uh, there's so many, you know, so many bits and yeah. bits and pieces. But um, any good stories you haven't told us? Any good stories? <laughs> oh, well, I, it, I guess it just. Um, what was so remarkable to me is how complicated, you know, things were, how complex, and also how easy it was to work mm. in, in, in all the communities. You know, I mean, I think people think maybe it's hard, but, or, um, but I felt everybody welcoming and everybody wanting to mm -hmm. tell a story in one way or the other. Um, I think maybe the only group that that I couldn't work with were were the ultra orthodox, right? Um, 
and um, I did try to, I worked or talked to a, um, a school for um, girls, um, and I really would have liked to have worked there, but they said no. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, people didn't say no. Um, so the complexity came from the bureaucracy? or No, I'm saying that, the, no, the, sorry, the complexity oh. of what's going on. Oh, I see, you know, of that course. How, yeah. how, uh, you know, how many stories there are. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of them are overlapping, but they're all, um, they all have their own, their own specifics and their own, and, and, and it's all very nuanced. You know, mm -hmm. it's not, um, it's not the news. <laughs> Right, yeah, yeah. So. And um, and it, uh, to say it again, the, you really have to look at the book, and it's it's very very rich and um, so many labyrinths within it. Yeah, I I, I tried to make it as. Uh, as contextual as possible by having ephemera from the different projects in there as well as me photographing the people who photographed and... And the, the interviews are... Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah I was and particularly moved by the one of her... Um, the elders from the first group who had her library burned. Yeah, and There's that's just a fragment it. of an English language page mm -hmm. from obviously a very serious work of history. And, yeah. yeah. So it's downstairs, look at yeah. it. <laughs> all righty, well, thank you all for coming. Yes, thanks. thanks. I just want to say thank you to Wendy and Luke. It was wonderful to hear you speak. Um, thank you so much. And also, to let everyone know, on May 12th at 7.30, we're doing a special food and film program here. Um, we'll be screening a documentary about the Israeli food scene, and we'll be offering a tasting menu um, of Israeli food, so we hope you can join us then too. Thank you.